Hi guys, and welcome to The Psychologist. Today, I wanted to take you through the overhaul procedure of a Seiko watch. Today, we're going to look at this specific watch. It's a 6309-7049, and we're going to have a look at what exactly happens during an overhaul of a watch like this. I recently uh, had a follower on Instagram who mentioned to me that he had some trust issues when it came to sending uh, his watches to various watchmakers. And people have good reason to have trust issues because there's a lot of dodgy practices, uh, we could say, when it comes to overhauling a watch. So today in this video, I wanted to take you through the exact procedure of what happens when your watch comes into service. So it's going to be a video that's cut together uh, through the various stages. Unfortunately, I'm not in the position to show you uh, exactly the whole dismantling procedure, but I'm going to show you each step of the way exactly what happens when the watch comes in. So the in. first thing we do when the watch comes in is put the watch on the timing machine and see what kind of results we're getting. We can see here that we've got some pretty low amplitude. Um, the lift angle set to 55, it should be 54.5, uh, but these witchy timing machines uh, don't have the uh, the half degree or the half digit, uh, um, half digit option. So we go for the 54 or the 55 degree lift angle. We can see that the watch is all over the place. 6.8 uh, is the beat error. We want that figure to be low, below 0.8 and as close to 0.0, .0 as possible. And uh, we can see that our timing is minus 861 seconds a day. So this watch is in definite need of an overhaul. The next thing that happens is we open the back of the watch up and inspect what the movement looks like. We can see here that the movement appears to be in pretty good condition. Um, and we don't seem to have any major problems. Uh, obviously, it's just in need of a full overhaul. So now we will get to removing the oscillating weight first and then taking off the dial and hands. Once the dial and hands are removed, uh, we're ready to get started to dismantling the watch. We make sure that we keep the dial and hands, uh, they're put aside in plastic uh, bags separately to make sure that nothing, no further damage can happen to them. Uh, and then they're kept with the rest of the watch uh, while the watch is dismantled. It's also at this point that we will um, completely strip the case apart, uh, ready for cleaning. So we're now at the next stage in our service procedure. The watch is mainly dismantled. We can see the main plate is here. Now we can go through the watch itself. We can see we have the whole watch dismantled into pieces. So we can see that it's individually been split up, completely stripped down, taken apart, certain uh, various uh, bridges and things, uh, the, uh, the dial retaining ring and the movement ring as well. It all goes through the cleaner. Now at this point, we're going to, and we, all, we can also see our small basket with all our small components, screws and things that can easily get lost. We put those in there. There's a few things we need to address at this point before we actually put the watch through the cleaner. The first thing we're going to do is our dual upgrade. We're going to drill out the main plate and put in a dual for the barrel. And we're also going to push out our bushing and put in a dual for the barrel there as well. The other thing we're going to rectify is the side shake of the barrel. Here we can see the barrel that's been taken out of the watch. Let's get that in focus. And we can see the play. Now, that's too much play. That's going to start hitting uh, the center wheel, possibly, or the barrel, um, or the main plate, or the, sorry, start on the main plate, or the top, of the, the top of the bridge. It could hit there. It could also hit the center wheel. Now, this is something that's generally left. Unfortunately, when watches are serviced, a lot of the times this is just left and put back in, but it's really not acceptable and needs to be repaired as part of a full service. I should have explained, as everything was being taken apart, uh, we can see uh, all the watches in the baskets, we made sure that uh, everything was okay, all the components didn't need, any components didn't need replacing, and also parts were pre-cleaned. Uh, I used this solution here just to pre-clean parts. I brushed the wheels. We peg out the jewels, obviously, to make sure everything's fine. So now we'll get to the jewel upgrade uh, and barrel repair. So we can now see that our jewel upgrade is 
complete. We can see there that we have a nice jewel in our barrel. And we also have, uh, so we can put that ready to be cleaned. We can put that in our, in our basket. Uh, there's one that's particularly for, there we go. That can be ready to be cleaned. We can also see that our uh, barrel bridge jewel uh, is in place and installed. Now, a lot of, well, I shouldn't say a lot, but there are a few guys out there that are jeweling the bottom uh, barrel bridge, but they're not jeweling the top barrel bridge. So that's something that we do here at The Psychologist. We make sure that we uh, jewel the top barrel bridge. Uh, there's also a bushing here, which can be up upgraded with the jewel um, if required. We're not going to do it in this particular case because uh, that bushing is okay. Uh, and it's just, it's not really needed because there's so little friction uh, on that jewel there. So, last but not least, we have our barrel. We can see that our barrel has been repaired. Let's get it in focus. Our barrel has been repaired and our play is to a minimum. It's important to make, sh make sure we make all these updates uh, before we put the watch through the cleaner because we don't want to be making these messy updates uh, after the cleaner. So what we'll do is we'll open our barrel. Oh, it's also important to clean the barrel. We clean the barrel before we make uh, the updates as well. So we'll now put our barrel in our cleaning baskets. We will put all of our cleaning baskets together with the watch separated. And our watch is ready to go into the cleaning. So here we are at the cleaning machine. Now, we're gonna lower our watch movement baskets into, give you a better view here, here's our cleaning machine. That's an Elmer Swiss manual, uh, manual cleaning machine. Uh, we're ready to lower our baskets into our cleaning solution, and then we'll go through three rinsing solutions and a heat. Now, we'll lower our basket in, and we can get started. Now, that's going to be in there for about 13 minutes in the cleaner, about five minutes in each rinse, and then 13 minutes in the dryer. And I also wanted to point out uh, how our watch is stored during the process, so we can see that our case uh, including our crown and other bits and pieces have been completely dismantled, all our gaskets taken out, uh, crystal, everything completely uh, removed. Uh, we can see that our dial and hands have been stored safely along with our calendar discs. Uh, and that's how everything stays while we wait for the watch uh, to be cleaned and reassembled. Now we're ready to start assembling once the watch has been through the cleaner. So. Firstly, the watch will get put into a movement tray, like so. We can see that it's all been uh, put into bits into the movement tray. Here's a close-up view. Uh, but before we start assembling the watch, we're going to install our mainspring into the barrel. Uh, this is the old mainspring, uh, but it has been wound up uh, with a mainspring winder, uh, which looks like so. Uh, which is how the mainspring is wound in. And then I like to put them back into uh, the, the rings, uh, the new mainsprings come in. I also like to keep a stock of these from old movements that I've uh, collected. Uh, and then that mainspring is uh, ready to go and get put back into the barrel. Uh, so that's one of the first things we do. And we also want to make sure that we uh, our pallet fork and our escape wheel are coated with a special coating called Epilam. Uh, Epilam is something that stops the oil from creeping. Um, it's quite important to use, I find. Uh, it stops the oil from uh, going where it shouldn't be, uh, and that's particularly important on something like um, the escapement. So we now have our mainspring installed inside our barrel. We can see that it's cleaned and then re-lubricated correctly. 
Unfortunately, it's all too common for mainsprings to just be left inside barrels and put through the cleaner. Uh, sometimes even the top isn't, uh, or the lid isn't even taken off. But you can see from this video how much work goes into just making sure the mainspring is correct. And this really is crucial to making sure that a watch is well serviced. We can now put our lid on our mainspring. And close up our mainspring like so. And we can go to check to make sure that the end shake of our barrel is correct because we need to make sure that there's play in the mainspring. And we have a nice amount of end shake that I can feel there. And also we have the correct amount of side play. Not too much, not too little combined with side shake. That's our end shake there, and our side shake. We have freedom. Now we get on to assembly. So here's our base movement after we have serviced the watch. We can see that we have a gain of around plus two seconds, our beat error is 0.3, and we have amplitude of around 220 degrees to 22. So now that number is going to jump around a little bit because the watch was just oiled. So as the watch starts to settle, um, we will see that uh, the amplitude starts to increase and stabilize. So here we can see the movement ticking away nicely. Just a, ta just a note on amplitude. Um, Japanese watches such as Seiko's, uh, they're designed to run differently than Swiss watches. They're designed to run uh, as a lower amplitude movement. Um, that's just the way that they're manufactured. So we can see here uh, after service, or we have the base movement uh, assembled um, and lubricated. We have the escape and lubricated and uh, the, the train wheels as well. So we can now get uh, to lubricating the rest of the watch. So now the dial side of the movement has been assembled. So we can see that all the calendar work has been put in place and everything's there, everything's lubricated and assembled, ready to go. The only thing that we're missing at this point is um, the day wheel, which will be put on momentarily, and then we can fit the dial and hands. It's also at this point that we're going to assemble the case. Now the case has been completely um, removed, or taken apart, I should say. It's been ultrasonically cleaned, um, and the crown has been dismantled, uh, and we have fit a new gasket into the crown as well. Uh, and now we're going to fit gaskets into the watch. Uh, we're going to fit a new back gasket. We're going to keep the original crystal gasket because it's in good condition, uh, and they're quite a particular style. Uh, generally, the crystal gaskets are pretty good on these, um, but we're going to double check uh, to test its water resistance. So we're going to assemble the case and then test it for water resistance. So here it's at this point we have the case assembled uh, and ready to be tested for water resistance. So we have the crystal fitted, we have the crown with the gasket fitted, and we have the case back on tight. Um, so we're going to now check in water all the gaskets to make sure everything's fine uh, now that they've been replaced. Now this particular watch will actually have a new crystal um, installed, but it hasn't arrived yet, so we're going to use the old crystal uh, for the purposes of this exercise. So here we have the watch positioned in the water tester. Uh, we're going to pump it up to 50 meters, 5 bar, and then check our water resistance. So it's at this point when the watch is plunged into the water, we can see the water resistance is pumped up to 5 bar. Now we slowly release the pressure. Now what we're looking for is a steady stream of bubbles to come out. Those bubbles that are coming off are just air gaps around the crystal itself uh, and also the holes in the case where the spring bars go. But we can see from our crown, our crystal and our back gasket, we have no steady stream of bubbles. So this watch is now made waterproof again, even though it's however many years old, uh, from the 70s, uh, it's made waterproof again. So a lot of people are told that, oh no, your vintage watches can't be made waterproof. Um, that's not true. You just need to have access to the correct parts. The, the watch will now go uh, onto the heater 
uh, and we'll do the condensation test to make sure that there's no water inside the watch. We can now do the condensation test. The watch is heated on the heater, like so, uh, to around 47 degrees Celsius. This heater doesn't actually have a temperature gauge, so it's just roughly until it's hot enough, but we don't have the movement in. And then we put a drop of water on the crystal like so, and we look for condensation because the heat inside the case and the cold water drop on the, on the uh, top of the crystal will draw out any condensation in the watch. And then we can check to make sure that everything's fine. We now have the dial and hands installed on the watch. We have the watch installed in the case correctly. And we have our automatic work in place as it should be. Now, we can see here that the watch is fully wound. Now, when these are fully wound, they don't wind particularly well. So they, uh, they do need sometimes a little bit of a, a nudge to get them going. But once they are, when they're not fully wound, uh, those oscillating weights work uh, extremely well. But because they're fully wound, they, uh, they get a little tight. So we can see that everything is in place now. Um, our gaskets have been changed. We have a nice new back gasket there. We have a nice new crown gasket. So we'll put our uh, case back on at this point of the service. And we will do some checks, which are always good to do. We will check our hand setting. Move our hands around. Make sure that... We're lined up at six. We would generally do this with the watch, not in the case, but for the purposes of the video, it's a little easier. So our hands line nicely up at six. We're pointed to the six. They line up at nine as well. They're pointed to the nine. Everything at 12. Looks good. Uh, we also want to check our quick date at this point. Quick day is good. How's our, our quick day is good. And we can keep going around to make sure we have a nice snap at 12 o'clock for our date. And then at three. It can vary a little bit. There's always a little bit of play between the, the date. Uh, on, a, on a Seiko. just due to the nature of the gearing. It's not something that we can get around. Perfect. It's at this point now that we can go back to our timing machine uh, and have a look at our results to double check. Uh, we can have a look at our lines here again. We're getting a little bit of a, a, a trace on there. That's to do with the, um, the noises from the case. And it could also be from my voice because our microphone's pretty high. But we can see that we're losing a couple of seconds a day. Uh, our amplitude's around 220. Like I said, that's going to climb. Uh, we can check our various positions now uh, of the watch. We can check our timekeeping. We can see that our line's nice and straight in that position. Uh, we're losing a bit of time there too, so we need to regulate up a little. Uh, we can check uh, our other position there. We can see that, uh, again, our line's pretty straight. We can see it's saying minus 21, but that's gonna it's going to take some time to level out. Uh, we can check a few other positions as well. These are only timed in. Uh, in fact, I'm not really sure how many positions they're timed in, but we like to time them in... Uh, in over kind of three uh, over five positions so we have a bit of a loss there in that position so we can regulate it up but we have a loss anyway so we're going to have a variation of i would say around 15 seconds uh on this watch total variation so that's pretty good uh for the standard of watch that's pretty much to be expected for something uh, of this case we come over to our bergeon final test winder uh the watch is then put on the winder uh, to see what kind of timing it gains or loses over 24 hours. So this watch now will sit on the winder for 24 hours. Um, it'll get stopped overnight. Uh, and then we're in, after 24 hours, we're going to check uh, how many seconds per day the watch has gained or, gain or lost 
um, because that's really the actual number that we wanna work with because that's the official number when it comes to on your wrist. So we aim for a two to five second gain per day um, over 24 hours. So once that's done, that's, uh, that's what happens. Uh, and then the watch is uh, regulated accordingly to see uh, you know, how, how, what we can get it to um, for that two to five second gain. Um, the watch will then be pressure tested again to make sure that everything's fine when the seals uh, are in place. And then the watch will be ready uh, to go out to the customer once we've done the power reserve checks. So that's the service procedure for when you send your Seiko in to the psychologist, you can see it's comprehensive. Um, it's certainly not the easiest way to service a watch, uh, but it is the correct way to service a watch. So if you're trying to pick a watchmaker to choose, make sure that you pick someone that adheres to uh, these procedures, is changing gaskets, and is really doing a full overhaul because there's plenty of guys out there that really aren't doing a full overhaul. Um, and a lot of cowboys, uh, as we like to call them. So make sure that you're getting the best service uh, possible and choosing a watchmaker that follows a similar service procedure to this. Uh, this is a service procedure that the big brands use when I work for Rolex. This is the service procedure that they would use. Uh, so thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, video of how to go about a watch service. Um, if you've enjoyed it, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at The Psychologist. Uh, you can also check out my website, thepsychologist.com. Thanks, guys.